And now on to a very special guest, uh, the man that we teased a little bit about in the intro to this show. We're bringing you Mr. John Fury, father of Tyson, Tommy and Roman Fury, who are all paving the way. Well, some of them have paved the way <laughs> in boxing and also a professional boxer yourself. Yeah. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me on your show. Great Thank to be here. Anyway, I want to dive straight in to mindset because I know just how big that is in boxing. I mean, throwing around words like discipline, resilience, um, consistency. These are terms that I suppose you hear both in the financial world, but also in the boxing world. So as someone who has succeeded, has kids that have succeeded really well, how do you go about creating these environments where you, you create such strong mental resilience? Well, it's from an early offset, really. You know, as, as children, if you want them to do well, you've got to put time into them. And I put a lot of time into all of my sons. I've got six sons, and I put a lot of time into all of them, not just the ones in the limelight. And um, I feel if you get them on the right path from a young age and tell them it's all about thinking and mindset and thinking before you act, if you can get them two things right from the early age, everything else will fall into place. And they wanted to do it. They've got to want to do it. They've got to want to be successful in their own right, you know. And I've learned them to be that way. Don't follow your brothers. Your individuals. Do your own thing. Have your own personality in your own life. And be proud of what you do. Not what your brother can do. What I can do is what you can do. It matters. Yeah, and that's the, uh, that was the blueprint for all of my sons. I'm already hearing similarities. This idea of don't follow the other people's path because you have to do it yourself. You have to learn yourself. You have to experience yourself to be able to build those mindset. I mean, in, with money and finance, we say the same thing. You can't just copy what someone else is doing with their money because what works for them isn't going to work for you. And one day you're going to have a challenge that someone else hasn't faced. That you've got to figure out for yourself and you haven't, you know, very much so built your own mindset. Mm, one man's meat, another man's poison. You know, and <laughs> at the end of the day, it's what you want to do and what you're happy doing. And if you're comfortable doing it, you'll succeed. But you've got to love what you're doing as well. If you're distracted and you're not 100% engaged on what you're focusing on, you won't work. It's got to be 100%. I want to flip it quickly because obviously you, you coach your sons, yeah. but you see hundreds of other boxers. What are the other people doing wrong with their mindset? It's not what they're doing wrong. Not everybody's a natural fighter. Fighters, what's got a natural mindset, what don't need too much coaxing, don't need too much training, they're what I call naturals. They're good in every way. They're going to succeed. They've got the talent, they've got the ability, they've got the mindset, and they've got self-belief, which is the most important thing. And if you get someone that believes in yourself, they take a lot of stopping in every avenue. And that's why there's world champions, and there's only a handful of them. Look how many people go through boxing, and how many make the grade, how many Mayweathers, how many Ray Leonard's, how many Aglers, how many Muhammad Ali's, how many Tyson Fury's? There's not many people what's got everything. Parallels, I mean, Poku, let's talk about the noise when it comes to money. I mean, I don't know if you ever go on social media and you see people claiming to be, you know, experts telling you, do this, do that, do this, do that. You're predicting, you know, certain crashes or saying, oh, buy this, buy this, is going to go up. But in reality, you need to follow your own path, understand the markets for how you see them. And then you make your own sound decision rather than just, you know, listen to what everyone else says. And Forensic. Shit. <laughs> there you go. It's an age old saying, if you study your job properly and you're making money at it, never tell people how much you're making in your life and never boast about your success because it affects the man next to you who's not doing so well. He'll resent you for it, he'll hate you for it and he'll never want to be your friend because of it. So what you do is keep your business to yourself. Never be in anyone's face. Never be a show-off. Never be a big head. As long as you're comfortable knowing in your own mind that you're succeeding every day, yeah. you're happy, the world's happy. Oh. The man next to you is happy because he doesn't know what you're doing. It's like I know. Years ago, if a next-door neighbour got a new front door, he wanted one. If he changed his car, he wanted one. It's like repetition. They're all followers, aren't they? You know, but what you do is give them nothing to follow, in your case. And I know plenty of multimillionaires what drive old cars, they mix in, 
you know, you wouldn't know them from anybody, but they're happy with it in their own skin. They're happy with their own success. They don't want to boast about it, but they know they've got a comfortable life, a stress-free life, because they've studied the job properly and they've done it right and succeeded. But you don't need to tell anybody about success, do you? Because everybody today on the internet can look happy when they take a photo of that phone. Mm. <laughs> anybody can smile for 10 seconds, take a picture. Okay, the world's all right. And when the phone's put down, they're crying. And it's so easy now to be a plastic millionaire, isn't it? There's all this tick, you can buy a Rolex watch for £80 a month. You can get the best of a car for £400 a month. You can look the part, but what are you? Mm. What are you when you look at it in cold light today? A fraud. Yeah. There's no substance to your game. I mean, that's brilliantly said. I mean, there's a saying that says, you don't become a millionaire by spending a million pounds. <laughs> <laughs> you become a millionaire by having a million pounds. In, and I think that's exactly what you said. Very clever. People are so ready to spend it but not to save it. They want it now. Here and now. But the trouble is, again, when you get a proper millionaire and you get a fake one, you'll get laughed at. It's like a diamond will shine, a stone won't, you know. And there's a lot of stones out there. I call them pretenders and wannabes. You're better off being yourself. This is who I am, you know. This is how I live my life. Take me or leave me. I'm a nice guy. I try to help people. I do the best I can. I'm considerate. What more can you be in your life? But all those things I never wanted to be. I never wanted to be a show off, never in anybody's face, never do any. I got I drive a 32 year old car on another 25 year old car and I get joy out of being normal. Because to me it's A to B. Yeah. You know, and as long as I can pay my bills and not be in debt to anyone, isn't that a success on its own? That is, well, you're doing better than 99% of the well, world yeah, right Yeah, because I always say, Sticking you can't, if you can't afford it, don't have it. Of course. Don't have it. Yeah. You know, if you can't afford a thousand pound pair of trainers, I don't care if you had 10 trillion dollars, by the way, I'd never give a thousand pound for a pair of <laughs> That's ridiculous. Unless they were you really know. nice. They'd have to be nice. They'd have to have got 22 karat gold soles on it yeah. that way. So I just say, you know, it's like brands of clothes. It's all rag. It's just got a different brand on it. It's got a successful brand, and you're only buying the brand. You're not buying the quality to clothe it. Because when you put it in that washing machine after three or four washes, yes. it's in the same street as yet. <laughs> yet yeah. But it's a brand, isn't oh, yeah. it, again? Well, they're smart. They know what they're doing. They know what they're and doing. And they're targeting the, the right. They're not targeting rich people. Let's no, just put it that way. they're targeting the wannabes. Exactly. Oh, I want to have a Nike t-shirt. I want to have Nike trainers all in Nike. Because they want to be <laughs> like that. Mm. It's like I've always said. You could live in a castle, drive an old vehicle, you think you're a no one and a bum. But you drive a nice car and live in a tent, you're somebody. Because you're being judged on what they can see. They can't see your tent, they can't see your castle. They're looking at what you're driving and what you're dressed in, you know? Yeah, and to translate that, it's essentially irrelevant. It's a facade, isn't it? I mean, it's a facade. Poker, I mean, how many things did you hear there that? you'd wish you could just teach young people when it comes to money. Yeah, no, I think people want to look the part rather than be the part, like we've always said. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, it's all about how you manage your money, how you place it and look for it to grow for further generations. Mm -hmm. So it outlasts, you know, the dynasty. So I think that definitely needs to be expressed to the youth. But again, I think with social media, there's so many distractions where you're scrolling, you've seen all these nice things. Yeah. You're, you have access to all these things where maybe 20, 30 years ago, you grew up way more humble. You only saw what was around you. So humble, mm -hmm. didn't you? <laughs> yeah. You know, at the end of the day, the world today want you to be like that because it's better for business. Now, if they all fall like me, you get your shopping in Aldi, you know, <laughs> food's food. A supermarket is a supermarket, whether it's Sainsbury's, Marks and Spencer's or Aldi or Lidl. It's still a shop with groceries on a shelf. But people think, oh, I don't want to be seen going to Aldi. They might look at me and think I'm an old one and I haven't got any money. Well, that's the mindset, what's being put out there today. And it's the wrong mindset. We were brought up with hardly anything. And we knew if we got hold of a pound to appreciate it and spend it wisely. And that was the reason why I can guide all my sons 
because I say, listen, if you don't look after your money, you're going to get one shot here to blow. Once you've ruined it, it's over. So invest your money. Invest your money while you've got it. Forget about the big cars. Forget about the watches. Forget about the clothes. Get your footings in order. Get your ducks in line. Get your money invested. Like I said, that's the perfect transition point because I want to talk to you about business now. Mm. We know that boxing, when you're successful, brings with it a lot of money and a lot of success. It's there when you're at the very top of any, mm. any category, right? So as a business person, what is your approach? What are your son's approaches to handling that level of financial success? Again, it comes down to parental guidance, doesn't it? Because if you give a 20-year-old a bank full of money, he hasn't had the lifetime experiences to handle that money, to do what's right with that money. So therefore, he has to listen to guidance. And it's all about having good people on board as well. You know, we've got some real good advice on board, not just myself. You know, we, we've got good lawyers, you know, and if you listen to what people's got to say, you'll keep your money. But listening to the man next to you, what doesn't really know a lot, will cost you. What you've got to do is put him in his category and you in yours. You can slam the same amount of fun when you go out. You can do this, you can do that. But you've got to realise what level you're on and what's good for you and what's good for your money. You know, and always look for a bargain. Oh, I love it? a bargain. You've got to have a bargain. Like in my house, all my stuff comes out of like auctions, charity shops, where you can get it cheap because somebody's bought that and they've lost a lot of money in that product. But I've got that same product in my house and it's doing the same job for cheap. You know, so that to me is a win, win, win. I really want to stress what you're saying right now. It's so important. I mean, there are people listening to this mm. that aren't anywhere near the level of the Fury family and especially even yourself for the success that you've had and that your family have had. And yet the way that you're talking about money and the fact that it's not about what's on the outside, it's about what's on the inside and just listening to the way that you've approached it, the way that you spend your own money. Mm. I think that there's going to be a few people checking themselves thinking, well, wait, wait a second. This guy's much like, he's bigger time than I am right now. And he's, like you said, driving around in a 25 year old car, a 30 something year old car looking at charity shops, doesn't care what shop he goes to. I'm really hoping that we're hitting a hard reality. I mean, I know that even I am here, yeah. speaking to yourself, yeah. listening to how humble you are with the success that you've had. I'm learning a lot right now. There's a whole new level to play when it comes to this like modest game. Yeah, 100%. I wanted to ask then, how was that translating that ideology to then the Suns? Because they're out there, you know, winning big lumps of sums for every bots in fact. Is it? Is it easier or is it a bit harder to convey that humbleness? No, because they know by being with me most of their life. Because my lads haven't done much schooling. I was the teacher, me. Because I thought to myself in life, what you learn in the school's one thing, but what you learn in the real world's another. And you can have real world experiences like some people go to school from 4 to 16 on to further education and they're working for somebody else for minimal pay because they can't get a job with all these skills they've got because there's that many people to choose from out there with the same skill set you know and you watch all these programs like the Alan Sugars Dragons Den and all that you know and it's like what can I say the ordinary people the salt of the earth people that goes on them shows have made those millionaires what they are. But they'll never tell you that. They'll never tell you that. And the working class man, it's not his fault. It's just how he's been programmed to do it from school. If his father's done it, his mother's done it, his grandparents have done it, he's going to do it. Well, like me, I come from a travelling family. There were six of us in an 18-foot caravan that was six foot wide. You know, we had no running water, no electricity. We washed outside. And I think before we had a bath on a hot shower, I was 17 years old. Wow. You know, and we was used to that way of life. But I got to a certain age because I used to deal with the general public and knocked on doors for a living. And one old lady 
changed my life forever. I was selling some carpets door to door from the back of a vehicle. I used to buy them out of a warehouse and make a small profit on them by knocking on people's doors back in the early 80s. Freezing cold day. Come in, son, she said. I was about 12. Come in. It's very cold. I went into our drawing room. She had a lovely big roaring fire. The place was lovely and warm, cosy. I thought, why can't we live like this? I said, what is this? I put my hand on these radiator tight. I didn't even know what they was then. So why is that hot? I thought, why is the side of this house hot? But it wasn't, it was a radiator. But I didn't know. You know, it was just another machine I'd not seen. And I thought, I want to be warm in the winter months. I want to do this. I want to do that. And if she can do it, I can do it. So this is the norm. And I sat talking to that lady. She was about late 60s for about 45 minutes. And she educated me so much to the point where I want to live like that. And you know what? Guess what? In the next three years, I was living like that. Yeah. So I guess then investing in your home, that's more of like a deep-rooted, like sentimental yeah. investment because from where you come from, having a nice home, making sure you live in a great place, it just makes you feel at peace. And... Yeah. I haven't got a nice home. You know, there's a lot of people got a nicer house than me. Mm. But it's how I like it. It's what I've done in my life. I'm going to look round it. It's my success story. And probably people think it was a toilet block for an house. But it's what I've done. It's warm. It's dry. It does its job. I've got a TV. It's full of stuff out the furniture shops and dispersal sales. But that's how I am. You know, even Tyson, he's a multi, multi-millionaire. He still goes in Aldi for his shopping. You know, he'll still go to Asda's. You know, he still looks for a bargain. Yeah. Only this morning coming here in Brighton because the fare was too small the cab wouldn't take me to the train station I thought you know what I'm going to walk and guess what the heavens opened <laughs> but I weren't bothered about getting wet I'm still wet now and I thought you know what bugger it I'll walk you're not ripping me off hmm. now anybody else oh yeah doesn't mind yeah take me 30 quid for a mile up the road that's not how I think oh I can't take you he's looked uh, I can't get you all in here there's two of us I said no problem mate see you later Let's walk. I've got two legs. I think that is a perfect note for us to say thank you very much for sharing today. I mean, I know people come here to listen about money and finance, but I think that you've shared so many insights and thoughts and experiences mm. that people need to translate into every aspect of their life, in particular their finances, their investing and their trading. That modesty, that idea of protecting yourself. Don't worry about what other people are doing. Learn for yourself so many things that I've just taken from like this short time with you so I want to say thank you I want to say thank you for listening to me another thing I'll tell you before I go as well Please. if you listen to other people nine times out of ten you won't succeed if you get a feeling that's good and it suits you run with it you know because at the end of the day everybody's got an opinion but if you have not got the mindset to appreciate what's in your pocket you're going nowhere in life Appreciate the job you're in. Do it to the best of your ability and get the best out of it. And the rewards are terrific, aren't they? I mean, you've, you've ended the show better than I ever could have. <laughs> so thank you very much. Cheers. Appreciate you.